Hello car lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman. Today, my friends, we're going to be looking at Mercedes EQC, which is basically the electrified version of a GLC, although I'm sure Mercedes probably won't describe it in that way. But we all know that's essentially what it is. So it's kind of, if you look at it, you can kind of see the similarities between the GLC. I, th I think it's, it's kind of looks like a GLC that's been to a sort of a cosmetic surgeon and had all the sort of the wrinkles ironed out and sort of had a little bit of a, a facelift as well. But a good facelift, not like one of these ones where you look absolutely dreadful, like uh, I won't mention some names, but we know who they are. More like kind of, they say Sharon Osbourne has got the best facelift of them all. Apparently that's, if you want to look at how to do a facelift really well, that's a really good one. So this is the Sharon Osbourne of the uh, electric vehicle community, if you can uh, imagine such a thing. So let's have a look around it, shall we? As you can see, the back looks absolutely awesome. But again, very indicative of those lines being kind of smoothed out from the GLC, kind of curves and slopes down to the back a little bit more. Got the um, side um, bars here, which is very much, again, from the GLC, which I always think makes, somehow makes a uh, smaller SUV look kind of slightly more substantial on the road. Um, this one's got the slightly smaller wheels. You can get bigger ones than this, but as we come around the front, this is where it kind of, the beauty really shines through. I love the way they kind of molded out these LED lights there. You obviously got the nice grill in the middle, classic Mercedes. As we come around to this side, it's mostly the same as the other side, to be honest, but we're here now, we've made the effort. I've walked around this far, I'm gonna go all the way. So there we go, beautiful side profile. Slightly more sleeker from the GLC. I think the GLC was particularly ugly, kind of at the background here, it kind of just, carried on going sort of straight upwards whereas this one slides down a bit it was kind of reminiscent of a sort of a black cab in a way london black cab but this one they've kind of definitely as you can see definitely sorted out the styling now you're probably wondering to yourself why is he sitting in the dining room for this clip here and uh you'll be right to wonder that it's a very strange thing and the reason is um the clip that i was going to use next has somehow mysteriously disappeared from my camera so i can't use it anymore so what i was going to say was a lot of people have been criticizing the uh eqc for having not much headroom in the back. So that will now um, flow seamlessly into the next clip. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what they're talking about because I've got a good bit of headroom here. As I say, I'm six foot and my hair is in a kind of a 1990s quiff and I've still got room for it and my hair's not getting messed up. So, and if you have a look down here, yeah, my knees are not exactly, I haven't got a huge amount of room, but it's very cleverly designed here where they've cut these bits kind of out there and out there. And to be honest, that seat is pretty far back if you'll excuse my um filming equipment there if it went forward just a couple of inches i think it's pretty good in here to be honest so those people who are saying there's not much headroom and not much leg room i think you're talking out of your ass so if we have a look in the boot here we've got 500 liters of the finest mercedes storage space here which is not huge but personally speaking i think for a smaller suv it's not too bad you're going to get more than that in the uh, bmw ix3 but not much and just another 10 liters just a few uh, more bottles of water um and then in the audi um e-tron of course you're going to get over 600 about 660 in there so it's not the best in the model range but i think personally it's okay also you've got a lot of storage under here as well all sorts of stuff obviously taken up with bits and pieces of charging equipment but all in all i reckon that's a pretty decent space for the size of car so let's have a look at the cockpit and as you'd expect with mercedes mercedes have always been kind of market leaders in terms of interior design and they've not let us down here with their new electrified versions because they kind of upped the ante slightly if you look at, i love the way that these door cards wrap around into the dash there and they've got this bit here which apparently is made to look like a fender um amplifier I'm, I'm i'm not familiar with fender fender amplifiers but uh, if you're into them, apparently that looks like one and it folds sorry it runs all the way around there like that i think it's amazing this dash is beautiful up here very high quality leathers you've got there you can quite see that i'm not sure you've got the ambient purple light in there which is indicative of mercedes now got an awesome tft screen here which extends all the way across it's one whole unit and this has got obviously all touch screen there and things in there it looks very very cool um here you've got, again, you've got like a virtual uh, dial thing there, which is becoming more and more commonplace, particularly in electric cars these days. Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. It's almost like steering wheel porn, that, isn't it, of Mercedes. Uh, beautiful design. And then we follow the dash and the center console all down here. Good Lord, that's rather blinding, shining off the piano black there. I'm gonna try and turn it around. There we go, that's a little bit better. As you can see, with piano block cars, they almost always, this car's almost brand new, but it's all, they almost always show up the scratches very, very 
quickly. So if you're going to get one with the piano back, be aware that's going to be a, a big issue. Um, over here, we've had a look at the door cards, but we've had a look here. This is the window controls, very classic Mercedes there. Again, excellent excellent feel to all the leather i was reviewing a jaguar the other week and they jaguars kind of let themselves down a little bit i feel with the interior but this is the, this is the difference when you get the german quality here we have the sports seats look there again not superly overly imposing not massive bucket style seats but just the right amount to sort of kind of you know just sort of keep you in place when you're driving and a uh, if you'll pardon my uh, language a shitload of leg room in the front there Anyway, I think that's enough chatting. Why don't we get the fella out on the road and see how she bloody well drives. So we're out in kind of sort of suburby sort of roads at the moment. And I must say, it's just an effortless drive. It just glides along just, oh, it's beautiful. Which is kind of what we've come to expect from Mercedes. It's a very, very, they usually do a very, very uh, sort of a smooth uh, sort of effortless drive, but it's kind of accentuated even more with the electric cars. It's kind of like, kind of like with electric car were sort of, made for Mercedes really. It works really well with the way they um, sort of set up their cars. Not least of course with the steering because it, it's not what you call the most dynamic steering on Mercedes. If you've ever driven one it's extremely kind of disconnected. It's not a very involving drive but I kind of think that Mercedes uh, customers know that. I certainly know that and it's what you expect and well, yeah it's not very involving but it is kind of very very relaxing and very smooth it's like it's all run on kind of all sort of i don't know something extremely um it's like there's no friction at all when you turn the wheel it's just beautiful glides like it's sort of full of double cream or something and as long as you know that and, you, and you're not expecting you know like a uh, sort of super involving drive like a sports car or a lotus or something i think you're going to be okay because you know it, it hasn't stopped mercedes from selling millions of cars so far so 0 to 60 is going to be about five seconds in this or a little bit over which is damn fast if you think about it for a car of this stature of this type of what it is usually you'd have to go back to like you know something like a well, 12 years ago, something like that. I know the 911s did it in about five seconds then. So it's 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 truly awesome. And it's something that we're going to see more and more as electric cars become more and more um, uh, sort of widespread and popular. So in terms of cornering, as I say, it weighs quite a lot, this. It's two and a half tonnes. And as I'm throwing it into this, look out, you idiot, and a KN. Why is it always the Porsche drivers? As I was saying, if I throw it into a corner like this, it really leans over. You get a real sense of that weight. In there i don't want to run into someone else here oh my god so here we go this is one of my favorite things to do in an electric car or any fast car really to be honest it's when you're just joining the motorway and you're on the slip road and you put your foot down so i'm just going to do it now but i'm going to cover my microphone because i usually blow it out when i do this here we go going to boom it Whoa! <laughs> yeah oh yes <laughs> this thing flies which is not really a huge surprise you know because these days <laughs> All electric cars are fast. They're all really super torquey. I think it's got something like 720 newton meters of torque, this one, just without checking, just off the top of my head, which is, it's a hell of a lot of torque. It does 0 to 60, as I say, in about five seconds or just over. And to be honest, I think it feels kind of quicker than that. Five seconds is like kind of a, you know, sort of a 911 sort of 12, 13 years ago. And yeah, it's a fast car, but to be honest, the sensation it gives you, I don't know if it's something to do with the, the lack of the engine rumble or something, but to me, it seems even faster. But in terms of driving on the motorway, very, 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 very nice. That's that's a lot of very in one sentence. And it comes as no surprise, really, because Mercedes are kind of, uh, you could argue some Mercedes are kind of built to do this. I don't think Mercedes would probably say that, but the fact is, a lot of Mercedes are going to be sitting on motorways, whether it be um, for business use or uh, long trips with the family. And it kind of just makes you feel like you could just drive it forever. I feel like I could just like drive this thing for like 3,000 miles and get out and just be as fresh as a daisy. And this is where that kind of dull sense of steering from Mercedes kind of makes sense, you know. It's just very, very smooth. You're not getting much feedback at all, but do you really want it on the motorway? Not really. You just want to be relaxed, to be honest, and finish your journey in the most kind of, you know, comfortable way possible. And in terms of the ride itself, it's very, very comfortable, very planted on the road. You feel safe here. I mean, to be honest, you should feel safe when you go in, the, in a straight line in any car, but it feels, I don't know, just kind of 
reassuring and just sort of the perfect amount of sort of solidness. It's always interesting as well when you get to uh, up to sort of, you know, sort of uh, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour on a motorway or a freeway if you're in America, that you don't really sort of um, notice the difference between electric car and a petrol car once you're up to speed and you're cruising because the engines tick over quite quietly anyway and it's just all about the road noise. And in terms of road noise, there is a little bit there, but as I've said before, I don't really care about road noise. Road noise is not high on my agenda worries. There are bigger things in this world to worry about than road noise. So if you, I've, I've spoke, when I used to work in the car trade, I'd get men that would come in and they'd be obsessed, absolutely obsessed if they could have the slightest hum. I'm like, well, we can't, you know, we can't change the laws of physics for you. So I think if, if you're worried about that sort of thing, just you need to go away and uh, perhaps rethink your life. It's worth mentioning that that big windscreen I talked about earlier, is very, very handy out here on the motorway. So you can just, the, the field of vision is incredible. It's like you're sort of, uh, I don't even know what it's like to be honest, but you can just, uh, well, you can see a lot. So in terms of range, because this is the big thing, obviously, when we're buying electric cars, how far is it going to go? Well, they, Mercedes quotes somewhere in the region of 245 to 250, but in reality, it's going to be, we know it's going to be down around the 200 mile, depending, of course, on how you drive and what, you know, sort of features you're using on the car, it all um, sort of adds up and makes a difference to your range. And in terms of charging, apparently they say it will go from 10% to 80% if you use a rapid charger uh, in about 40 minutes. But I mean, it seems a very, very odd way that all car companies are doing this. You, you ask them how long it takes to charge, they say, oh, it goes from 10 or 20% to 80% in half an hour or 40 minutes. I go, well, <laughs> what if I want to charge it to full? <laughs> what if I want 100%? In which case it gets a little bit more vague because that last 20% takes the longest. It does vary from um, from manuf one manufacturer to another. So to be absolutely honest, I don't know what how long that last 20% takes because I'm not going to stand here and um, charge it for the last 20% because it would make a rather boring video. Now in terms of price, it starts at around 65,000 and goes up to about 75,000 depending on what you spec on it obviously, which Sounds like quite a lot, I know. It does seem quite pricey, but don't forget, this is cutting edge technology. It is a Mercedes and you are gonna feel, I don't feel like you've been, um, I, I feel like every penny of that is kind of worth it. You know, it's, it's reflected in the quality of the car and indeed the drive of the car. So guys, to sum up, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about electric cars, as you know. They're wonderful to drive. They're super quick, massive, massive torque, huge, um, really, well, huge, well, very low 0 to 60 time. Um, but I don't know. I still think it, de it depends on how you drive and where you drive. I think it's fine if you just do loads of driving around town or within a short area and you put it on charge every night, you're probably going to be absolutely fine. If you're going on longer journeys or if you do regular longer journeys, I would, I'd still worry. I would still be a little bit kind of unsure about whether I'm going to get there or not with that realistic 200 mile range. But as I say, if that's not a problem for you and you want a good family car that's solid, safe, and has plenty of room, very, very comfortable, and looks really futuristic like a spaceship, then you could do a lot, lot worse than getting this car, my friends. It is, if you aren't worried about the range, like I say, take that away. I don't think I can fault this car. There's literally almost nothing. Well, no, there is nothing. So guys, I hope you found that video informative and useful today. If indeed you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and uh, press the like button on the video and even head over to the Patreon page to support me in a, uh, a monetary way should you feel uh, so minded to do so. But until next time, guys, I'm Bobby Freeman. Drive safe.